the midst of everything else that's going on at the Capitol. Oh, Congressman. Hello, Congressman. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, I uh, got, I was uh, getting carried away in my last meeting. So sorry about that. Hey, Faith. No problem at all. We're going to get started here in just two minutes and just want to let everyone know we will be recording this event and, and get started in just a minute. Thanks again. Hey. Mayor, how are you? Long time no see. It's been at least a week. Wonderful. I know. I was just in the fair city last week for um, the National League of Cities and it was great weather. It was warmer than here. It was beautiful. Well, I talked to, um, just so you know, I think we all were talking about the the bus uh, rapid tra transit on 114. Oh, yeah. And so I was meeting, I met with RTD yesterday. We went over that a lot, so. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. You're, you're fighting the good fight for us. And um, 119 has been a priority for that quarter for yeah. probably what, a decade? So Forever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Since that's I usually was when, elected in 07, so it's been a long time. <laughs> that's when they usually a decade past the time it needs to get attention is when it finally does. That's what right. I learned. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us. We're going to get started here in just two seconds. Hello and welcome to our Denver, Colorado virtual press conference. Our event features Congressman Ed Perlmutter and state and local elected officials along with a public health advocate. Our speakers have come together to call on the US Environmental Protection Agency to improve their draft heavy duty trucks rule and implement as strong as possible safeguards to significantly reduce diesel pollution and quickly transition to clean electric trucks. For our agenda, we'll have two to three minutes of formal remarks from each of our speakers who will be visible and audible via their video. At the end of our formal remarks portion, we'll have a brief session for questions related to today's event. I'm now honored to introduce the U.S. Representative for Colorado's 7th District, Congressman Ed Perlmutter. Congressman, the microphone is yours. Congressman, you're still on mute. You think after all of these uh, months of uh, COVID, I'd remember to unmute. And uh, usually I'm the one that's complaining about that. So thanks. Uh, I appreciate being here uh, with uh, uh, State Senator Faith Winter, with uh, Mayor uh, Castriata, and uh, Lori Anderson. Thank you for participating in this. Uh, obviously, uh, Colorado has suffered uh, wildfires most recently, the one up in uh, Boulder wiped out 1,100 houses or thereabouts as a result of uh, climate change. Um, there we had climate uh, intersect with weather, intersect with we're not quite sure the, the source that ignited everything, but uh, obviously tremendous losses by uh, people in our, in our area. And throughout the summer, we had uh, wildfire smoke that uh, really dampened uh, the summer that summers that we enjoy here in Colorado so much. So our desire, my desire, is to see that we continue to improve uh, emissions and emission standards from all vehicles, uh, particularly trucks. And so I just uh, I'm looking forward to. Uh, the EPA coming out with the strongest standards that it potentially, that it possibly could have because we no longer have uh, time to wait. We just don't. I mean, we're already suffering from the changes uh, that I think uh, carbon has caused, uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide uh, into the atmosphere. And uh, I'm just looking forward. I know this is states, this is uh, Faith Spaleywick and Mary's your too, yours too. So I want to hear what they have to say and then be willing to take uh, questions or whatever. So I'll turn it over to whoever our next speaker is, which I assume it's probably Faith Winter, who chairs our transportation committee here in the state and has uh, prioritized uh, resiliency, clean energy, and uh, reducing emissions as uh, 
part of her chairmanship and part of her representation of uh, Adams County. So I'll turn it over to Faith. Hi everyone, it's so good to see you and thanks Mom's Clean Air Force and Act Now and Climate for hosting us today. Thank you to the Congressman for all the work that he's been doing uh, to address climate issues. And in Colorado, we have a longstanding tradition at being at the forefront of protecting our environment and addressing climate change. Um, just last year, we passed a groundbreaking uh, transportation bill that prioritized electrification um, and electrification across the board. So from uh, private vehicles to government fleets to clean trucking. And we have to partner with the EPA and with other states to make sure we're meeting our climate goals. And we can't afford to miss our climate goals. Uh, as was mentioned, we just had the worst wildfire Colorado's ever seen in December. It's not even supposed to be wildfire season. Uh, last year, Denver had the worst air pollution in the entire world. My dad was recovering from a lung injury, and I could tell how good or bad the air quality was that day if he could walk from the living room to the kitchen without the aid of oxygen or not. Um, so we have to make sure we're meeting our goals, and we need to meet them as quickly and fast as possible, which is why we're asking the EPA to meet near-term goals and make sure that they're prioritizing reducing nitrogen um, dioxide and carbon dioxide. Um, gas and diesel powered trucks and buses are a key source of carbon pollution. In fact, the number one source of carbon pollution in Colorado right now is the transportation sector. Uh, and by making electric trucks and buses more available, more affordable, which we're working really hard here, we just launched a new um, clean school buses uh, campaign. Uh, we'll be taking a critical step in tackling climate change and leaving a better environment for future generations. And by transitioning to electric vehicles and trucks, we can help create more good manufacturing jobs, both in Colorado and across the country. So more manufacturing jobs, cleaner air, and addressing our climate goals. Um, this is a win-win situation that we need to move forward on. And like I said, we need to partner both with the EPA, we need to partner with other states, and we can't do it with one without our wonderful local leaders, uh, like Mayor Castriata, who's been a key and integral part in addressing transportation and climate change solutions in Colorado. And I'm so excited to introduce Mayor Castriata. Thank you, Senator Winter. With the transportation sector as one of the largest sources, sources of carbon pollution in Colorado, stronger clean truck and truck and bus standards and investments in EVs will help communities fight climate change. Low wealth communities and communities of color bear the brunt of air pollution and climate crisis. By investing in cleaner trucks and buses, we would reduce harmful pollution and ensure our most vulnerable communities in Colorado have cleaner air. Approximately 25 million people in the U.S., including more than 5 million children, suffer from asthma. The limits on vehicle pollution that protect them should never have been rolled back, particularly when battling a public health crisis that is especially lethal for those with respiratory conditions. Across Colorado, almost 93,000 children and nearly 440,000 adults suffer from asthma. Pollution from trucks and buses dirties our air, threatens our health, and can lead to increased respiratory distress like asthma. Electric trucks and buses produce zero tailpipe pollution and protect our health and families' budgets. Even without a pandemic, living with air pollution has been linked to higher rates of lung diseases like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Multiple studies have found that high levels of air pollution are also linked to larger numbers of people hospitalized with pneumonia. Coloradans deserve clean air. Without stronger clean truck standards and bold investments in clean vehicles, we will continue to pollute the air and harm our health. We need to act now. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Lori Anderson with Moms Clean Air Force. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Castriata. Uh, my name is Lori Anderson. I am a Colorado field organizer for Moms Clean Air Force, a community of over 1 million moms and dads united against air pollution, including the urgent crisis of our changing climate to protect our children's health. 
As a mom, I am concerned that our future generations, including our own children, will be significantly more impacted by climate change fueled extreme weather events in their lifetimes than we are today. Well, already nearly one in three Americans experienced such an event this year alone. I live in Broomfield near the devastating Marshall Fire, which has become a sobering example of how climate change is impacting our communities and fueling more frequent and more intense wildfires, including destructive, fast moving outbreaks, even in the dead of winter. 2020 was the second hottest year on record and the future will likely be even hotter. Across the nation, we are seeing increasingly powerful hurricanes, more destructive droughts and severe flooding. We know far too well that addressing the climate crisis, the climate crisis can't wait. Therefore, we need congressional action now to call for the strongest possible heavy duty truck standards to help meet this critical climate moment and protect communities that are already living with extreme and dangerous weather conditions. The transportation sector is currently the leading domestic source of the carbon pollution that is driving climate change and the trucks manufactured under this rule will be on the road for decades. So these trucks and buses must be clean, cleaned up as soon as possible. By implementing even stronger clean truck standards, the EPA will also follow through on the Biden administration's stated commitment to environmental justice since low wealth communities and communities of color are more likely to live in areas with high levels of hazardous air pollution, including areas near high traffic zones. Beyond the climate impacts, pollution has also been linked to a variety of health problems, including aggravating asthma and other respiratory illnesses, cardiovascular conditions, and even premature death. These families have suffered long enough enough and cannot wait extra model years for clean air. Pollution-free electric trucks are the best available technology to both reduce harmful nitrogen dioxide and greenhouse gas pollution. While the Biden administration's newly released draft heavy duty truck rule is a positive start, these standards must go farther in reducing deadly NOx pollution and they must put our nation, national bus and truck fleet on a clear path to 100% zero emission all electric vehicles as quickly as possible and be finalized this year to protect, to better protect children, people with asthma, older adults, and other vulnerable groups from the health harms of air pollution. The EPA can and should use these standards to accelerate the transition to electric trucks by 2035. Doing so will make good on promises to put in place the strongest possible standards and drive investments in clean trucks, buses, and zero pollution electric vehicles, as well as spur manufacturing and job growth in the Centennial State. We encourage members of the Colorado delegation and other state leaders to call on the EPA to set the strongest possible heavy duty vehicle standards to limit dangerous diesel truck pollution. Everyone has the right to breathe clean air. And I thank you for your time. And I will now pass it back to Kevin, our moderator. Thank you, Lori. And thanks to all of our speakers. At the end of our formal remarks portion of our event, we now have a few minutes for questions related to today's event. For members of the media, if you have a question, you can use the raise your hand function to indicate a question, or you can also type they have a question in the chat box. You can even put your question in the chat box if you would like, and I'll work through the questions one at a time. I can unmute your line so that you can ask the speaker your question. And before we get started on your question, if you would just please state your name, media outlet, and if you have a specific panelist that you are directing your question to. So again, please use the chat function or the raise your hand function to indicate if you have a question. Again, please use the chat function or raise your hand function if you have a question. Uh, Kevin, this is uh, Ed. I forgot to mention one thing and if, while we're waiting for a question. Um, a couple of days ago, I had the opportunity to tour the National Renewable Energy Lab where there is so much uh, uh, activity uh, concerning uh, major trucks and the need for reducing the, the uh, carbon footprint that they create or the nitrogen oxide uh, emissions that are caused. And there is so much uh, that can be done to improve our climate, to reduce the pollution into our air. And right in our own backyard here in Colorado, we have the finest uh, laboratory in the world uh, working on these things. And, and what we 
learned there is that although we have electric trucks which are uh, out on the road, we're reducing uh, carbon. We know that between our Department of Energy at places like NREL and the EPA, we can continue to improve this. And I think that's really our request is for us to keep pressing forward and with these technological advancements uh, to improve our atmosphere to avoid some of the, the disasters that we've seen uh, from coast to coast and that we've uh, suffered here uh, most recently right at the end of December. So I'm glad I got a chance to sneak that in because I that was part of my remarks and I forgot about that. Thank you so much, Congressman. And I'll open the floor if our other speakers have any additional comments they would like to share. I'll just share that both between our transportation and climate bill that we passed last year and the greenhouse gas rulemaking that the Colorado Department of Transportation did, uh, Colorado's really leading at the forefront of how to do transportation projects that are climate neutral. Um, so we're taking care of safety issues, we're taking care of roads and bridges, we're making sure to relieve congested areas, all while we're expanding multimodal funding, we're increasing electric um, electrification across sectors. Uh, and it's been a national model that I hope other states in the EPA looks towards in making sure that we address transportation and climate at the same time. Thank you, Senator Winter. Any additional comments? Well, I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can share that Broomfield has adopted its own greenhouse gas emissions goals. And one of the recommendations from our citizen-led advisory committee, it's called ACES, the um, Advisory Committee on Environmental Sustainability. Uh, one of the things that's been a, a problem in Broomfield is uh, we don't have a single hauler municipal trash program in some areas. So you have five different trucks crisscrossing across the town, you know, several and down one street a day because everybody's just signing up for their own uh, waste management. And so we're going to put a single hauler contract question on our November ballot to see if the, the residents want us to move forward with, you know, trying to organize this better. It's just a waste of, of trucks and the safety issues and the wear and tear on the streets, uh, you know, beyond the emissions. Uh, so we're hopeful we can move into that and streamline the, the waste management. It would also offer composting, which is something all of our residents keep asking for, that they would compost if it was more convenient and have curbside composting offered because we all know organic waste is a huge contributor to methane um, and greenhouse gas. So we're, we're taking little steps in our own community. And I think a lot of our, our neighbors are doing the same to do our part. Thank you so much, Mayor. Okay, I wanna thank all of our speakers for their time and continued support on calling on the EPA to enact the strongest possible heavy duty trucks rule. Thanks again to the Congressman, the Senator and the Mayor for their time and continued leadership and passion on this issue. Thanks to our event hosts, Lori and Moms Clean Air Force for sponsoring our event today. Thank you to members from the EF for joining us. I should note that a video recording of this event will be available on the Moms Clean Air Force Facebook page. A link to that video will be sent out in the press release within the next hour. If you have any follow-up questions or requests for speaker interviews, you can connect with Kurt Sellers, whose contact information was on the advisory as well as the press release. And I'll put it here in the chat function in case anyone needs it. Thank you again to everyone. Have a wonderful day.